Rupert, said Mrs. Bear one day, take father's boots and run to Mr. Grant the cobbler and wait till they are done. Yes, mummy, Rupert said at once, just let me get my ball, so if I have to wait a bit, it won't seem long at all. So off he went to Mr. Grunt, who said, Well, Rupert Bear, I think we'll take two hours at least to put them in repair. All right, said Rupert, I'll come back, I'll play with my new ball, then wandered on some time until he came to a high wall. The very place, he thought, for me to throw and catch it back. He did so o'er and o'er again, but once too off a lack, for he had thrown it just too high and saw it disappear o'er the wall. I've lost it now, my nice new ball, oh dear. The wall was much too high for him to climb, though off he tried, until he almost gave up hope to get the other side. Then down the road there came along a hippopotamus, who said, That surely can't be done between the two of us. Get on my shoulders, he explained. I reach well up the wall, then climb the rest, and I'll be here to catch you if you fall. Rupert then mounted his broad back and safely reached the top. Goodbye, said Hippo. You're all right. I must no longer stop. Rupert climbed down the other side. He thought, dear me, I trust I'll find some easier way out, but get my ball, my must. He looked all round, he searched about, then saw it near a peg to which a speckled hen was tied by a long string from her leg. The hen exclaimed, get you from here or you will rue the day you climbed that wall. I'm prisoner here, compelled each morn to lay to lay an egg for an old raven's meal. And should I fail, says she, he'd chop my head off straight away and roasted I would be. The raven, said the hen, I'll know is a miser grim and old who thinks that anyone found here has come to steal his gold. Don't let him see you. If he does, he'll never let you go. But as she spoke, a shrill voice called, Who's this? I'd like to know. She was the miser's cook. She called, Hi, gardener, come, I found a stranger rounding about our master raisin's ground. The gardener came running up. He called, What's it this time? I thought our walls were much too high for anyone to climb. The gardener was a grizzled dwarf. Now what, he asked, could bring you here? I'd not be in your shoes, no, not for anything. Straight to the raven you must come, and here he'll make you stay. Who sets foot on our master's ground can never get away. Well, for a start, the old cook said, you'll wash up these things there. If you're hungry, eat those crusts. There's plenty and to spare. And if you're thirsty any time, a pump outside you'll see. Cold water is very good to drink, so now don't bother me. Rupert looked round. Saucepans and pots, plates, cups and saucers too were there for him to wash. He sighed, oh, what a lot to do. He gets hot water and a cloth. He means to keep his wits, but a cup falls through his hands at once and breaks itself to bits. The cook rushed in. What's that I heard? A cup? Well, I declare you must be clumsy with your hands. Just see what you've done there. But when she saw that little bear was crying piteously, she said, well, never mind. This time no one will know but me. Just then the gardener came along and said, now, if he's free, I want logs for the raven's fire which he can saw for me. Rupert did this quite well. The dwarf said, Take these logs, young bear, while the raven's out, up to his room. Be sure you're not found there. Rupert makes up the fire, then stops. Spellbound he is with fear. A heavy step is on the stairs. Who is that drawing near? 
It is the raven coming up. With Rupert still inside, there's no escape, he thinks at once. Wherever can I hide? He crouches down behind a chair. The raven doesn't see, but sits down at his table, then unlocks most carefully the iron-bound chest in which he keeps his gold and jewels stored, and gloats and counts them o'er and o'er, that grim old raven's board. The miser locked his treasures up and growled beneath his breast. It's well that no one knows what's here, or it would be his death. Then, with one foot upon a chest, he settles down and sleeps. Poor Rupert, trembling, who's heard all, out of the room now creeps. Rupert crept out so silently, opened and shut the door. He thinks he's safe. He did not note his footprints on the floor. For, coming from the garden path, his boots were far from clean. The raven wakes, sees them, and cries, Now, who is there as been? How glad was Rupert he escaped. Cook cries, Where have you been? He said to the old raven's room. You know, don't know what I've seen. Cook screamed, You had no business there. Oh, goodness, if he knew, he'd kill you on the spot, I'm sure, and maybe kill us too. Hark, says she, Here he comes, he knows. Now somewhere you must hide. Jump in the coffer. You'll be safe. She shuts him down inside. The raven dashes in. He shouts, Whose footmarks on my own floor? Cook trembles while she says, Why, sir, the gardener's, I'm sure. Those footmarks here are just the same, he cried, and there they stop. There's someone in the copper there. He lifted off the top. The raven looked inside and saw a figure crouching there. He seized him fiercely and dragged out a frightened little bear.